Hey guys, thanks for choosing to hang out with me again this week. So I'm doing a different topic today, and it's something we haven't discussed before. We're going to be taking a look at a cult that was aptly named the Ant Hill Kids. The group was controlled by a man named Rock Thoreau, who created an abusive and horrific environment for those who followed him. Unbelievably, the madness created carried on for longer than a decade, and it is just an awful situation. Please allow this to serve as a content warning. I invite you to join me as we delve into the dark world of the Ant Hill Kids. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Rock Thoreau was born on May 16, 1947 in Quebec, Canada to his parents Yacinth and Purette. Rock recalls his childhood home being very abusive, especially at the hands of his father. He was considered very intelligent and was raised with the teachings and values of Catholicism. Rock became infatuated with religion at a very early age. And by his own choice, he dropped out of middle school in the seventh grade so he could direct his focus on studying religions. During this period, he became obsessed with the Old Testament and the idea of the impending apocalypse. He honed in on the specific parts regarding the strict code on masculine authority. So Rock chose to abandon his Catholic faith and instead adapt those of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He dove into their way of life, relinquishing the consumption of alcohol, tobacco, and processed foods. He also opted for more holistic approaches. Even from a very young age, Rock was charismatic and very good at persuading others. As he grew older, this only seemed to improve. While still with the church, he was given the task of organizing seminars, but this would be short-lived. He managed to gain a small following by convincing them the world was going to end, but he could save them. When he attempted to challenge the church for a leadership role, he was swiftly shown the door. He convinced four men and nine women to abandon their homes and jobs to join him in his religious movement. He convinced not only them but himself as well that the world and their loved ones were corrupt and they needed to separate themselves. With the war between evil and good being upon them, Rock began to plan on how to save those who chose to trust and follow his word. He believed he was the people's savior, and they believed it too. In 1977, he and his group formed a commune in Quebec. Here the group lived free of sin, in unity and equality, and listened to his motivational sermons. He arranged for them all to wear matching tunics to support the equality within the community and also show their devotion. They were made to live according to his personal representation of the Bible. His following viewed him as their God with Rock developing a new moniker, Moses. As part of their rules, the commune were forbidden to contact any remaining family members or the church since it was against the cult's values. By 1978, his delusions of the impending apocalypse grew, and now he had a message directly from God. He delivered the bad news to the commune that in February of 1979, the world was ending and they really needed to prepare. To do so, he moved his followers to a mountainside he called Eternal Mountain. And it was here he claimed they would all be safe. The commune built up their own makeshift town while Rock watched on. He noticed his members resembled insects organically cooperating with one another, just a bunch of ants working on a hill. From this observation, he began to call his cult the Ant Hill Kids. To earn money, the cult sold goods and crafts in nearby towns. They were just living in peace and harmony. That was until Doomsday came, well, predicted Doomsday. When the world didn't end, his iron grip began to slip, and his teachings were questioned by his followers. But with most things, Rock had a reason. 
He explained there was a difference in the Israelite calendar and the Roman calendar, and it was all just a big miscalculation. He said time moved differently in God's plane of existence. Surprisingly, he didn't lose his followers. Instead, he chose to grow the community further. He married each of the women and impregnated them. He gained nine wives and from these women sired 26 children over the course of a few years. The group now swelled to 40 members and things began to get a little bizarre. Since the cult's formation, Rock transitioned from motivational leader to developing a heavy drinking problem, even though he forbid his followers from doing this. Rock took his self-appointed role to the extreme, developing a maniacal streak that triggered brutal punishments for the Ant Hill kids. One instance occurred in 1981 when he performed a botched circumcision on a two-year-old boy. The child wouldn't stop crying from the surgery, so another follower was ordered to beat the child. Unfortunately, the child subsequently died from the injuries, and to conceal the death, they burned the boy's body. Rock punished the follower for killing the boy. He ordered him to be castrated for his actions. Authorities had long held suspicions of the cult and their activities due to their primitive living conditions, so it was not long before child services showed up. The commune was investigated and the charred body of the boy was discovered. Rock and eight other members were arrested and charged with criminal negligence, causing bodily harm. But it would be a very short imprisonment, and all were subsequently released. After the arrest, he chose to pick up their life once more and move. In 1984, the Ant Hill kids set up and rebuilt near Burnt River, Ontario. After the death of the boy, Rock became increasingly totalitarian over his following and very irrational in his beliefs. He ordered his followers to not speak to each other without permission. This was the same rule for relations. He grew paranoid that his followers were spying on him and began to inflict punishments. He forced some of them into gladiator tournaments where for the entertainment of the commune, they fought in the dirt until they could no longer fight. If any of the followers hinted at defecting or straying from rock, he would inflict physical assault with belts. This was at first though. It was soon escalated to hammers and the flat side of an axe. He administered other awful forms of torture to ensure obedience. This included suspending the offender from the ceiling and plucking out each of their hairs individually. In some cases, he ended these sessions by using them as his own personal toilet. With his growing concerns of defection, he made them prove loyalty by having them break their own legs with sledgehammers. He also ordered them to sit on lit stoves, shoot each other in the shoulders, and cut off each other's toes. No one in the commune was safe from this abuse, the children included. Disobedient children were stripped naked and whipped. Allegedly, one misbehaving child was nailed to a tree and the other children were forced to throw rocks at him. All of the members suffered physical and sexual abuse and the mistreatment was starting to take its toll. One of the women chose to leave her newborn child outside in a blizzard to avoid the harsh punishments. And sadly, the child died from exposure. This death led to another visit from child services. Initially, authorities could not legally investigate the adults since the cult were registered as church officials. They could only ensure the welfare of the children. The children were removed from the commune in 1987 and Rock seemed to snap. He believed he was a vessel of God and he was capable of curing illnesses and performing purification ceremonies. His followers were riddled with sin and to fix this, he would beat it out of them. He served as the doctor for the group, performing amateur surgeries with no anesthesia or proper medical equipment. These surgeries included him injecting a 94% ethanol solution into their stomachs and performing amputations when he felt they were necessary. One of these procedures included him placing a rubber band around the testicles of one man for over eight hours. When the area became swollen and infected, he removed them, then cauterized the wound with a hot iron. The tipping point came when one of his followers, Solange Boillard, checked in with the complaint of stomach pain. 
In September of 1988, Rock arranged for surgery. Solange was ordered to strip down and lay on the kitchen table. He started out by punching her in the stomach. He forced a tube in her rectum to administer a crude enema composed of molasses and olive oil to help with the pain. But this only intensified her agony, so he decided to create an incision on the side of her abdomen. He pulled out a section of her intestines with his hand and ripped off a piece before stuffing it back in. He ordered for her to be stitched back up, and even though she survived this torture, it was very short-lived. The next day, she succumbed to the injury. It is speculated her cause of death was due to the digestive chemicals leaking into her abdominal cavity. When Solange was found dead, Rock told his followers he could resurrect her with a simple ritual. He had them bore a hole into her skull, where he placed his semen and that of the other male followers into the brain. Not surprisingly, she didn't come back to life, so he ordered her to be buried on the grounds. But before she was buried, he had one of her ribs removed, which he chose to wear in a case around his neck. But the near-death experience of another follower, Gabrielle LeVay, was what brought light to the horrific tortures the Ant Hill kids were enduring. In November of 1988, Gabrielle complained of a toothache, so Rock chose to remove eight of her teeth with pliers to correct the issue. The same night, he chased her around with a knife and cut a tendon out of her hand, for no reason. She suffered a blowtorch to various body parts and had a hypodermic needle broken off in her spine. After these events, Gabrielle tried to escape but found herself unable to live on her own without the cult. So she returned. Her attempted escape resulted in harsher punishments from Rock. He impaled her hand on the kitchen table and began to remove fingers, but soon decided this wasn't enough for her abandonment. He amputated her arm with a chainsaw and just left her on the floor. Eventually, the wound was stitched up and she survived the ordeal. Gabrielle stayed unsure of how to survive without Rock and her support from the group. It took him amputating a part of her breast and hitting her with a blunt end of an axe before she decided she had had enough and she would find a way to survive. On August 16, 1989, Gabrielle once again fled the commune. She hitchhiked to the nearest hospital located north of Toronto, where authorities were contacted. Rock was arrested and pled guilty to aggravated assault and one count of unlawfully causing bodily harm. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison. However, other cult members led authorities to the body of Solange. He was subsequently charged with second-degree murder, to which he pled guilty. For this additional charge, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole until 2000. The Ant Hill kids were effectively dissolved with a vast majority abandoning the commune once Rock was arrested. The doomsday cult had finally been laid to rest. However, some of the females did stick around, and even assisted him in fathering four more children from behind bars. He was transferred to Dorchester Penitentiary in New Brunswick. He applied for parole in 2000, but due to him being a high-risk offender, he was denied. On February 26, 2011, at the age of 63, Rock was found dead in prison. He and his cellmate Matthew McDonald had an altercation, which resulted in Matthew stabbing him in the neck with a shiv. McDonald took the shiv to the guard station and told him where to find him. McDonald pled guilty to the murder and received a second life sentence. A movie titled Savage Messiah was created depicting Rock and his crimes against the Ant Hill kids. Gabrielle, the survivor, continues to heal from her years of torture and torment. She has written a memoir on her life and times with the cult. The title is translated as Alliance of the Sheep. So I haven't studied too much into cults other than, you know, the more popular ones. The idea of a cult is always fascinating yet terrifying at the same time. You have one person who can lead a whole group with nothing more than a microphone, so to speak. It's basically a dictatorship and I don't know about you guys, but those parts in history have always unsettled me. One person, all the power, and all it takes is a bad day. What did you guys think of the Ant Hill Kids? 
The torture they endured was just brutal, and I guess I will never understand the hold that someone can have to cause someone to stay in a situation such as this. Please consider giving the video a thumbs up if you found the content interesting to let YouTube know you want more. And if you're not subscribed, you should because we would love to have you under the ash tree. Thank you to the viewers who continue to support me and appreciate the content I'm delivering. My Ashlings are the best, and as always, much love, stay safe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye friends!